What is up guys, Chris here again with another Four Nights of the Apocalypse manga chapter review. In the last video, I actually was pleasantly surprised with how the direction of the video was going, with uh, with that chapter leading to on essentially declaring herself the leader, as at the moment no one really had any experience to become a leader, or act as if a leader. And by the end, we got a reveal of a character that we did not expect to come up next, and that would be Hauser, who at the end of the series became the Holy Knight Grand Master, or the Captain of Leonis' Holy Knights. And according to the end of last chapter, he may very well still be the Captain of the Holy Knights. And this chapter was relatively tame in terms of, well, action and stakes, but some very interesting things did manage to occur, and we finally actually get the cant with only like a, without really needing to traverse a very long series of chapters. We got some nice interactions, and Hauser also was front and center for the most of this chapter, and I have to say it was very nice seeing him again, and to see how he has changed slightly from the end of the Seven Deadly Sins. But before we get straight into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for updates on future videos, it really does help. And also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at TheGreekWeeb for updates on future videos, and also when i upload next time also i also i also have a patreon account with different tiers the higher the tier the more benefits you'll get for all the tiers you'll have access to a patron only discord server so i would really appreciate the help and if you feel so inclined don't forget to also tip over on coffee as well just a little bit helps so i can make make sure i can keep these videos going a lot quicker and to be more consistent but with that out of the way let's get straight into the video we enter chapter 25 of the Fortnite of the Apocalypse, a thrilling day in Kant. And I have to say, this was pretty a pretty thrilling day. So, with this chapter, we start off with Hauser in a drunken stupor, you know, acting drunk as one would do. He looks out the window and he knows and he sees our group our main group of characters, Percival, Donnie, Nazians, An, and Sin. And he's and he ends up asking, wait, him? Why is he here? And as we end up seeing the group arriving at Kant, so this does confirm something that I speculated last week, that that Hauser was indeed in Kant. But why is he so far from Leonis in the first place? He is the Holy Knight Grand Master. He should only be that far out for a mission of some sort. And why is he drunk? But anyway, we get this nice full page of seeing Kant. And apparently this town is built like a fort. And this is something very cool. I like I like the design. Like a whole giant spiral tower with different buildings and the like all around it. With a wooden staircase and pathway going all the way up, up in a spiral. And we then cut to everyone going into different shops as they are exploring the town. An, of course, ends up going into a clothing shop and is actually very overwhelmed and excited over the different selections that she finds, and she even says herself, that it, that she keeps getting distracted. Now, Zienz enters a forge, and this place actually does, like, weapon repair, armor repair, and tool building, but Nazienz is more interested in if they can make glass, since he is a herbalist, and he would like to make some med try and make some medicine. Donnie, obviously, he sees a tavern, and just states that he is starting to get thirsty. Percival runs up the stairs to what it looks like a battle arena, where people are doing a Gorin match, which, if you forgot, forgot in Chapter 1, this is what Percival did with his grandfather almost every day so he could try and beat him in a fight. A type of training exercise. And a, a Gorin match is a, Kelt, is a shirtless wrestling match uh, that is uh, from, uh, Kelt, from, Kelt, from the Celtic lands. So that's still very nice that we get these little reminders since this wasn't really re re referred to since Chapter 1. So this is a nice little... Uh, callback to Percival's first interaction with his grandfather in the series. But Sin is sitting next to the horse, and he just starts yelling at them, telling them that they have to find an end first. They can't just go off, you know, uh, exploring right away. They have to find a place to sleep. So they go to an inn, and they say that they need room for five people, and the cost is actually 22 silver in advance, due to it being like a four-person four per person and two per horse so yeah so i guess he's counting sin as a horse but as donnie is asking sin for the money sin just says that he gave all the money to Anne, as she said that she didn't trust the men or beasts to 
hold the money, apparently. So it's obvious she's letting the whole leader thing go to her head more than I like, than I expected. So Sin asks someone to go grab her. So as Percival goes out to find her, we see that we see on while running down the stairs, dragging a huge sack, stating how heavy it is and how exhausted that she is from carrying it all the way down to the lodge. Now, with a nice little cheeriness in her eyes, she states that they all have to be prepared as she opens up the bag and brings out a bunch of trinkets like lanterns, canteens of different shapes and sizes, continuously saying that everything she said was that she bought was the same price, which is a little weird. She even gives uh, blankets and stuff with different textures to everybody. So this is honestly very nice. They This is stuff that they would otherwise need. And she even bought everybody new clothing. And I have to say, I like the new clothes. Percival's looks really nice and dapper, like he's going to a Star Star event. Looks like a little tuxedo, <laughs> I have to admit. Donnie's isn't bad. And Nazine actually really likes it, saying that it fits, fits him perfectly. I, honestly, these new, these, these new uh, uh, set, set of clothing is honestly pretty nice. The cast was more or less due for a design change this far in with some different um, uh, choices of clothing. She even gives Sin a little child's cape so he can be snug as a bug, which is hilarious. But then Sin asks the very important question. Where is all the money? And if they have any left. As An just says with confidence that they do. They have three whole silver coins. And obviously Sin is pissed as he yells with the force in the comedic effect where the whole fort is like going sideways from the sheer force of his anger. Saying that they are all that she's just a freaking moron. As that it turns out he gave her ten gold pieces, which is apparently enough to buy a, a fully furnished house. And I yeah, I like how stubborn she is that she just says that he should be glad that she has any change left. And asks what he even knows. And she even goes on to admit that everything she bought is freaking as pricey as ever. And everything especially is from different kingdoms. Kingdom of Danafor, especially, which honestly was is very interesting. So it's possible that that kingdom was rebuilt by the old king after the events of the Seven Deadly Sins. Which, if we don't remember, Danafor was destroyed by Fraudrum when he tried to break the coffin of eternal darkness initially, killing Liz, invoking Meliodas' wrath, and just straight up erasing that kingdom from the map. So in that time, I feel like Meliodas might have teamed up with the old king, and rebuilt that kingdom. I feel like that would be something he would do to right his past wrongs. Or this could just be mentioning that it's this expensive because Anaphor no longer exists. And Sin, still angry, states that she's just a sorry excuse for a leader. And that thanks to her shopping, they're going to be camp camping outside tonight. Percival says he loves camping, but Donnie just tells him to shut up. In anger, On takes Percival away with her, saying that she'll get the money back. And for Percival to bring the bag as well. With Percival asking where they're going, she just states to cram it and to follow her. They're, with the others thinking if they're going to return it or not, and if it'll even work. But since they're probably going to be gone for a while, Donnie tells them to ask Nazians and Sin if they wanted to go into the local bar to get a drink. Into the bar to get a drink. Sin ends up walking off, telling them not to mind and to do whatever. And once they en enter the bar... I like how uh, Donnie goes up and asks for milk and Vanya ale, with Nazi and v questioning everything. As we see Hauser, and this is pretty obvious, this is Hauser walking up behind Donnie, saying that stating kids drinking alcohol in the afternoon ain't that fancy. Donnie, being the cocky guy that he can be, tells the, tells the old man to leave it be, and that. And he doesn't see why he got his, has to be lectured by him, as we see in this. Big page that Hauser is hovering over Donnie and Nazian, and I just love how huge he is. He is a giant. He is jacked, and he is a giant at this point. Still drunk, obviously, but still incredibly intimidating. And I love how Donnie just basically shits himself in fear as Nazian just states that he's got to be a drunk. And as they receive their drinks, Hauser grabs the ale, chugs it down, sta saying, You fled. Holy Night training to be a traveling entertainer. So is drinking part of your circus act, or what? As Donnie nervously says that it's not, and that he's taking a break from all that. 
Nazians is asking everything that we're probably going to be asking if he knows him. And apparently, again, fully confirmed, Hauser is still the Captain of the Holy Knights, but he is actually his dead mother's brother. So, Hauser is Donnie's uncle. Now, that is insane. I know we're going to have some sort of connection to the Seven Deadly Sins in some form or another, or to characters from the past series, but Donnie being the, being the uh, nephew of Hauser is something I did not expect. And honestly, if you look at it, their hairstyles are roughly similar if you look, pay close enough attention. Not so much that it's in your face, but it does tend to make sense. So, this can actually help shed some light on why Donnie fled his Holy Knight training and just straight up gave up and saw himself as worthless. Hell, even, it seems Hauser is straight up pissed at him, super angry at Donnie for just straight up bailing on Holy Knight's training to become a performer. And if anything, I think he wouldn't have been as pissed if Donnie was just still there. It's very possible that he's just angry at Donnie for just running away. Instead of just straight up telling him I don't want to be a Holy Knight anymore. Or he just, or maybe it's, maybe this has something to do with Don, with uh, Hauser being a drunk. Maybe he feels like he's failed his sister and failed his nephew. And is afraid that his nephew is not going to do anything with his life. And sees everything going on as worthless. Now, this is a pretty dark turn for Hauser. But if this is a, why he's a drunk, feeling disappointed in himself and feels like he's let his sister down, then it would stand to reason why he would be, why he would start to be more of a drunk, despite him being the Holy Knight Grand Master. But we don't spend too much time on this as we jump over to the arena that Percival went to earlier, as we see a bunch of people betting on a fight between the champion and a challenger. As the challenger states that he can barely take it, and it even barely counts as a bet. Someone calls up and says, all right, three silver on the challenger. As then all of a sudden the challenger moves out of the, cha the champion's way, grabs him and suplexes him and knocks him out with the challenger being the winner. With all the proceeds going to them. And, I, and this is on and Percival just being incredibly excited out of all of the money they got. They got 60 silver coins, which I believe in this is a lot. I don't know how many silver ends up going into a full gold coin, but eh, we'll see. We'll see how this goes, because they already have enough to to stay to stay at the end at the moment. They got more than half to stay at the end, so they got more than enough. And I like how the challenger is asking on that it was nice for her to bet on him, but how did she tell that she could bet on him? On just says that she has an eye for this stuff, as we do see, and, and as she says, she's going to make a nice mint off of him, as she is a big liar. As we do see through her eyes that there is some dark smog around him, showing that he's hiding hiding a lot more than he seems. So, and I do like that An's um, uh, ability to tell between truths and lies is actually playing into them actually potentially getting some money. But the last page of the chapter can stand that Kant might end up being another action-based chapter. As we get two shadowy figures stating that uh, the group has split into two. And this shadowy figure is asking how the Holy Knight is, and apparently... He's talking to one of the marks at the bar, and that'll pass out from the drink soon. And that they'll give and that they will give them all a good time for me today. <coughs> As the chapter ends, with the page split between On and Percival just collecting a crap ton of money, and Donnie shitting himself over an angry Hauser just looming over him. But yeah, that's a, that's the end of the chapter, and I have to say, this was a very interesting chapter. When Hauser appeared last uh, ch last week, I thought maybe he was there waiting for Sin, since Sin would have to pass through there anyway in order to get to Leonis. But, with uh, Hauser being connected to Donnie, this adds a lot more to it, as Donnie does seem to want to be a Holy Knight still, but still has a lot of cowardice and lack of faith in himself to the point where he gave up on his dream. And this could end up leading to something with... Uh, this end up leading into something with uh, Hauser in the future, most likely. But, uh, yeah, there's not much else to say. Only the fact that someone is hunting Percival in the group, calling them marks and targets. So it's possible that they're being hit by bounty hunters, paid by 
possibly the Knights of Camelot. Maybe one of them is one of the Knights of Camelot. And maybe they slip something into Hauser's drink, for all we know. Not entirely sure, as he is a Holy Knight Grandmaster. Or this is just he just drank too much and he's going to pass out at some point anyway. But this leads into what could be the end of this arc, into what this little arc is going to end up being. A little conspiracy in Kant. Maybe they are. Maybe there are members of Camelot and supporters of King Arthur and his dream there. And maybe the whole group is part of some kind of wanted poster type deal, similar to the Seven Deadly Sins, with bounty hunters and holy knights, or ro or rogues going after them. And maybe someone is here in town that is going to try and go after them. Possibly on the level of Ironside or a little lower, to the point where the main group can't really handle them just yet. Thus, us having Hauser in this arc. Hauser can show us how strong he's gotten over the last 16 years and why he is a Grandmaster. Why he still holds the title of Grandmaster. So, I believe this arc is going to set up Hauser as the mentor slash guardian of the main group as they go to Leonis. Since he probably has to go to Leonis at some point, and, and maybe it'll, he'll end up illuminating everyone on, the, on what's going on between Camelot and Leonis right now. And I would like to see his reaction when he hears that Donnie was part, uh, hit, that Donnie and his group fun off Ironside, one of the strongest knights in Camelot, and if it wasn't for Donnie being there with them, they wouldn't have been able to get the piece of the Coffin of Eternal Darkness. So, and I want to see Hiles' reaction to that, and maybe he'll just give his nephew just a big old bear hug, being so proud that he did that he that he showed how brave he can be, or something like that. But yeah, that pretty much goes for all the speculation for this chapter. Next week, next next chapter, I'm honestly seeing something going on to lead to some kind of little mini battle arc to see what's going on with these shadowy figures going out for the main group. And I do want to see Hauser be the one that beats the big bad in this in this series, as he is going to be. He seems to be sit, being set up as the reluctant mentor for the group, and I wouldn't mind that. I liked Hauser in the Center of the Sins, but I felt like, but I felt like he was underutilized and didn't get much time to shine, or any key character moments since the Commandment arcs started. But yeah, what did you guys think of this chapter and Donnie's connection to Hauser? What do you think is going to happen with Hauser now? Will he be the reluctant mentor? Will he just be a guide or something like that? Please let me down, uh, down below what you thought of this chapter and Hauser's introduction, as well as what could potentially happen in the future. And again, don't forget to check out my Patreon, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video, as it really does show how much you guys enjoy this content that I am making. And with all that said and done, I hope you all enjoy the video, and I hope you all have an awesome day.